Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly, and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So I'm back in Florida. I was gone in North Carolina for about a month and I got back not too long ago now. So this is my first video that I'm filming being back home. It was absolutely lovely to have that trip and to be able to spend time with my family who I hadn't seen in over a year. So it was just really nice to be able to see them again and also to just get like a change of scenery in general, to be able to enjoy the mountains and go on hikes and get some colder weather because it doesn't get that cold here during winter, especially not for like the past couple of winters. So it was really, really nice to be able to get that, to be able to see snow for Christmas. Like it was all absolutely great, but I'm also really, really happy to be back. I also brought far too many books to North Carolina because I didn't read a single book while I was there. I brought so many books that I was like, maybe I'll be in the mood for this. Maybe I'll be in the mood for that. And then I just didn't read any of them. <laughs> like I did, I read some, I just didn't actually finish a book while I was there. So yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm not proud of that. But you know what? It was nice to spend time with family and it was hard enough to like make sure that I was still uploading and also doing the podcast that I'm a part of and be able to spend time with my family. So the reading kind of fell to the side, which I'm okay with. We all deserve a break every once in a while, but I'm already getting my reading back on track. I finished two books since I got here. I'm working my way through a third one. So January is going great so far, <laughs> which is good because even though I didn't finish any books while I was there, I did get quite a few books while I was there. It's so easy when people are like, what should we get you? And I'm just like, books. <laughs> These are the books I like. My mom's like stocking stuffers and I'm like, books. My brother's like gift and I'm like, books. Here's my list of like wish list books. <laughs> just in case. So now I'm doing my first ever book haul. I don't anticipate on ever doing many of these because I don't typically get a lot of books at one time. I like to keep it a goal to never have a book for over a year on my physically owned TBR. And if I have like a month where I get a lot of books and that means that that same month the following year, unless I've been really on top of reading, is gonna be really difficult to get through all of those books. So it's a good rule that makes sure that even in the present moment, I don't go overboard with getting books typically. But like, you know, Christmas time, I don't know. <laughs> But I am really excited about all of these books. So I wanted to share with you all the books that I was really excited to receive in December. I'll start with this one, which was one that I actually did purchase for myself. This is uh, Love Kurt, which is the Vonnegut Love Letters, 1941 to 1945. This is a collection of letters written by, and I think also to Kurt Vonnegut, the author. Um, and they've been compiled by his daughter, Edith Vonnegut. If you've been on my channel for a bit, you probably already know, if I absolutely had to choose a favorite author, Kurt Vonnegut would probably be it. I love his writing style. I love the way his books are written. I love the meandering, conversational tone, like matter of fact, all of it. I just, his books are so good to me specifically. <laughs> um, I can understand why some people don't like his writing because it, it is a little bit to get used to. It's very different than a lot of other authors, but I, I just, I personally really, really love it. And I find his life pretty fascinating as well. I've already actually read a collection of letters that were by him and to him throughout his entire life, or maybe not his entire life, but like 30s-ish to when he passed away in 2007. I know that it included him actually like going to war and everything. So it was a very fascinating read, but this one I think focuses more on a shorter period. Well, I know it focuses more on a shorter period of time. And also I think it's more focused on the relationships. Whereas the other one, while it did have some of the relationships in there, there was also a lot that were like to his editor and back or publications and back, things like that. So. I'm excited to read this one. I pre-ordered this and actually completely forgot that I ordered it. <laughs> and then when I got back 
from North Carolina, it was waiting here for me. So that was kind of nice. Okay, let's talk more about the books that I got for myself before we get into the other ones. I did end up doing book of the month for December, which I sometimes do it, I sometimes skip it. Uh, like in January this month, I did skip the books none of them were appealing enough to want to own the book. Sometimes I do see books that I want to read and I'll like just write them down and think when it comes out at the library or uh, maybe that's a book that I would audiobook, then I'll do that. But there were a few books that I wanted to physically own from December, so I ended up getting three. The first is The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This is a novella and then also a collection of short stories that are specific to like who the writers of history are and what the cost is essentially like the of the nation in general if you're learning history that's written by a specific group of people then are you really truly learning history or are you learning the history that was real for them but you know, if you're only hearing one side of every story, then you're not really ever hearing the full story. So this, I believe, focuses on that idea. I might have extrapolated a little bit just because this is an idea I've been thinking about a lot lately, especially with the books that I've been reading this year. Um, even novels like uh, How Much of These Hills is Gold. I did a video recently on that. That was one of the books on the long list for the Booker 2020 prize. And that has like a fair amount that's about you know, who is writing history and who can you believe? And just that idea in general, which I find very interesting, particularly now. And I think that a lot of people have been thinking about this a lot in the past year. And probably even prior to this, I just have the luxury of only just now really critically thinking about this. So I'm excited to think about it further by reading this book. Then I got People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd, so also a book of the month book. This I've actually also talked about in two other videos, my thrillers, uh, judging thrillers by the first line video and my uh, anticipated releases video. So I think that this one actually isn't technically out at the filming of this video. It might be out by the time this goes up. I don't actually remember its release date. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure it's in January, like mid-January, so this may or may not be out now. But this is a thriller that's about a mom that has this Instagram account and she kind of Instagrams a lot of her life. Her husband doesn't fully understand why she would do this. It seems like a bit of a crumbling marriage there. And then, um, I don't know, the idea of like how much is too much to share there's some type of thrilling thing involved. I don't know. I couldn't tell from the synopsis. So I don't know. <laughs> that's the best I could give you. I hope that's enough. Next we have Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein. This is of course the sequel to Ready Player One, which I read whenever that came out. Actually, I think I read it right before the movie came out because I wanted to read it before the movie. Uh, and that one was really good. I really enjoyed it. I like books that are centered on a overall game and that that is kind of the driving force of the plot. I think that those are super fun quick reads and that's exactly what Ready Player One was. So basically to try to explain this as well as I can, it's set in a post not post-apocalyptic, it's set in the future and things are a bit more run down in like the physical world. And this guy, James Halliday, who grew up in the 80s, has created this online world called Oasis that you can use like virtual reality, like goggles and even like bigger rigs to immerse yourself into. And then when he passes away, it kind of sets in motion this big scavenger hunt for these different little clues that will eventually lead to the end, which is owning his company, if I remember correctly. And uh, basically it takes a lot of 80s knowledge, like 80s video games and stuff to beat it. It sounds kind of ridiculous when you say it all like that, but uh, you're following the protagonist, Wade Watts, who is navigating through this and working towards finding the different clues and where that leads to and, and all this. And it's it's a really good book. It's, it's very fast paced and fun. 
I had a lot of fun reading that. So I'm excited to read Ready Player Two. I actually technically already started this and then I stopped. <laughs> it was mostly because when I got it, I was not reading a ton, as I said, while I was in North Carolina. And I thought that this could be the book that would bring me out of that because I read through Ready Player One so quickly. But then I started thinking, actually, I have a lot of thrillers that I'd like to read while I'm in North Carolina, just because I think that the environment is more thriller like. Particularly, I had uh, One by One by Ruth Ware, which is set in a ski lodge. And if it just seemed right to read that while I was in a somewhat colder climate than the one that I live in. <laughs> so instead I switched to reading that. And I almost finished that while I was in North Carolina, but I did finish that here. So once again, did not finish an, a single book while I was in North Carolina. But yeah, I am still really excited to read this, despite the fact that I started it and then stopped it. Don't let that deter you. I'm still very excited about this. Okay, then I got three books from my parents. Uh, the first is A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. I have no idea how to describe this book to you. Um, it sounds bananas. <laughs> Uh, this is a signed copy, which is really exciting because now I have two books signed by Jeff Vandermeer, one that I got signed in person, which is really awesome. But uh, yeah, right on the back, it says like warning, this book is not normal and has lines in it like Charlemagne appears as a giant moth. Napoleon is just a head. William the Conqueror is an eel. Some of the vegetables you will meet can talk. One of my personal favorites, guns shoot bears. Not as in a gun shoots at a bear, but that a gun is shooting bears out of it, like out of the barrel of the gun is a bear. <laughs> it just sounds crazy and weird. And at the very end of it, it says, if you proceed, you must repeat the following. I have been warned and the risk is mine. Long live Squishy. <laughs> I don't know what this book is, but I'm excited to find out. It seems like it just fully leans into the weirdness that Jeff Vandermeer can write. I keep expecting every book that I read by him to like push me away with how weird it is and it hasn't happened yet. But you know, if it's gonna happen with any book, it'll probably be this one. So I'm both very excited and very terrified to read this because he's currently one of my favorite authors and I don't want that to be ruined, but this seems real weird. <laughs> but I'm excited for it, I don't know. My emotions are very conflicting about this book. Uh, also, it's like a billion times bigger than I thought it was going to be. I, in my head, this is going to be like a 200 page book. I've seen it so many times online, like just the picture of the cover. And then I saw it and it was like, <laughs> no, much, much larger. Like the longest book I've read by him is like maybe 400 pages. And this one's six over 600. And I just saw a glimpse at the very end. And it looks like there's an actual test in it. What is this book? <laughs> okay, I need to make sure that I never do that again because I don't want to be spoiled and I don't want to cheat on the test, obviously. <laughs> then next for my parents was The Decameron Project, which is a collection of 29 short stories about the pandemic, the current pandemic. That was a collection that the New York Times did. So this is kind of inspired by the Decameron, which was done in 1353, which was 100 short stories or tales, it technically calls them, uh, by people who were just basically trying to wait out the Black Death. So taking that and kind of doing a new version of it, but with authors that are recognizable, like Margaret Atwood's in here, uh, David Mitchell's in here who wrote Cloud Atlas, um, Tommy Orange who wrote There There is on here. There's a lot of big names that are on the back of this book. So I'm looking forward to it. Then we've got Bloody Rose by Nicholas Eames. I'm so excited for this. So this is the second book in the band series. The first is Kings of the Wild, which if you haven't heard me talk about it, you must not have seen very many of my videos because my goodness, I have talked about that a lot. I feel like, I feel like I've talked about that book a million times <laughs> and it's warranted because I love it. Uh, it's actually behind me because I'm currently reading it again. This is my TBR back here for this month. The Kings of the Wild is about a band of ex-mercenaries who are retired and they come back together for like one last adventure. And it's hilarious 
it's really good at world building but still being thoroughly entertaining the whole time and it's got a good pacing to it I just I love it so much <laughs> so Bloody Rose is the second book I know that it follows a different cast of characters besides that I don't really know much next we have my secret Santa gift from my secret Santa from my book club <laughs> we did a virtual holiday party this year and exchanged books that way and this is the book that I got Say Nothing a true story of murder and memory in Northern Ireland by Patrick Radden Keith so this I'm thoroughly intrigued by <laughs> uh, I've definitely watched a fair amount of true crime like docu-series and things like that but I've never read a true crime novel so I'm curious about it but also I don't think it's like specific to one crime I think that it's kind of using that to tell this bigger story so it's about a murder a kidnapping at least that happens in 1972 when a mother is dragged from her home by masked intruders and never seen again and then I guess like what happens there is used to tell this greater story I don't fully know I don't fully know <laughs> but I'm excited about it so <laughs> then lastly I have two books that I got from my brother for Christmas this year the first is Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman I have had this on my list like on my wish list for books for a long time and haven't gotten it because I do already own Scythe by Neil Schusterman and I haven't read it yet and I try not to read books by authors when I already have a book from them but that's the beauty of somebody else giving you books they're allowed to do it I'm not allowed to do it for myself <laughs> it just seems weird to me to like have a book by an author I've never read before and then to buy another book by that author but I'm really excited about this one and I'm also really excited about Scythe I just haven't gotten to it yet but this I think it's about like the world no longer having water or like this drought being taken to like the next level in California or starting in California um, it could go one of two ways. One, martial law will be effective, things will break soft, and recovery will be relatively easy. Two, martial law will fail, riots will be systematic and severe, and Southern Cal California will break bad. So what happens now? I don't know. It sounds really interesting. I love when, like, big apocalyptic I don't want to call it because I don't think it's an apocalypse but just like really huge events happen in like this world and it's like oh what would happen if this crazy thing happened and oddly since the actual global pandemic we're going through I've only been more attracted to those stories so maybe I'm just like what if it was a different problem <laughs> Let me feel better that we don't have that problem. Then we've got The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. Another one where I have not read a single N.K. Jemisin book. I do own the entire Broken Earth trilogy. Haven't read it yet. And now I've got another book by her. But I just, ugh, this book sounds so good and so up my alley. This actually sounds more up my alley than the Broken Earth trilogy. Just because I don't typically go for like, what is that called? High fantasy? I think I think it's called high fantasy but honestly I don't know I don't read a lot of fantasy in general but I like magical realism which I think is actually a subset of fantasy so I don't know <laughs> but I prefer books that are set in this world and then like take it to like the next level where like crazy things happen um, or different ideas and that's what this book is this talks about how like every city has a soul and it's specifically this one specifically about New York and how each of the neighborhoods has like a different personality and a different soul that's all I know that's all I really need to know I'm very excited to read this I'll probably still read the Broken Earth trilogy first just because I've had it for longer but I'm excited to get to this one and those are all 10 of the books that I got in December I've got a lot of reading ahead of me a lot of books that I'm really excited to dive into so thank you for watching this video and sharing in the excitement that I get from receiving new books <laughs> I hope that that provides you something too sometimes if I just feel like buying books I just watch a haul video and then I feel like I did something even though I didn't actually spend any of my own money there's something about watching somebody else talk about the books that they got 
or uh, and then I'll just like add them onto my wish list and I'm like oh I basically got them like I won't forget about them now that's my tip if you hear about a book that you like and you want to get just add it to a list and just like leave it there or tell yourself that you're not allowed to buy a book the same month you heard about it that oddly like that little rule helps me a lot with a lot of things but anyways I hope that you did like this video and if you did consider subscribing and then I will see you in the next one bye